Now that you've had some time to practice controlling your car in the air with directional air roll, provided you watched my previous video, it's now time to transition that control into air dribbles. Air dribbles are one of the cleanest, coolest, and hardest to defend mechanics in Rocket League. They are effective at virtually every rank of play, but can be incredibly difficult to control. But I promise you can learn them with some of these tips that I haven't seen anyone discuss before. Because Rocket League is a physics-based game, you have to understand what your car does to the ball when and where it makes contact with it. But before we can get you up into the air, let's learn what I believe is the single most important aspect of dribbling either in the air or on the ground, and that is the catch. Dribbling in Rocket League requires catching or cradling the ball with different parts of your car. Some people will tell you that in order to get good at air dribbles, you just have to take the ball up the wall, jump off, and boost it into the goal. This is certainly the easiest way to air dribble, but I believe if you want to make the ball do whatever it is that you're wanting it to do in the air, it's incredibly valuable to first get the hang of this on the ground. This will make your ability to control the ball in and out of situations where things didn't always go absolutely perfect vastly superior. You'll hone your ability to adapt or adjust based on your needs. I plan to make a video regarding some more advanced car control tips, but for now I wanted to take what we learned with directional air roll and apply it to ball control. So what is the catch? Catching the ball means to touch the ball in a way that puts the ball into your control. Some of the most common situations you'll see this is when the ball is either rolling on the ground or flying in the air at you. Both are great ways to gain possession by halting the ball's momentum and transitioning it into a dribble. This is going to be our first stop on learning how to air dribble and catch the ball in the air. This part isn't the most exciting, but I assure you, the best way to learn something difficult is to scaffold from easier, more digestible mechanics that can all apply to the more advanced ones. Included in this video is going to be a training pack that will cover every situation, training routine, and in-game scenario discussed in this video. Side note, this pack makes for a fantastic warm-up before matches, so please feel free to load it up and get in some reps before your games. The first thing we're going to learn to do is dribble on the ground. Kudos if you can already do this, as it will make the next steps much easier to learn. For this setup, we simply drive into the ball, give a quick puff of boost to get underneath it, and feather your gas or boost as needed to maintain the ball on top of your car. This can be done at nearly any speed, but to start, I encourage you to try and go as slow as you can, making minor adjustments to either your steering, gas, or boost as you get the feel for the ball on your car. There are a lot of advanced dribbling mechanics and flicks that can start from here, but that'll be for a later video. Now then, it's time to ramp up the difficulty just a bit. For the next few shots, the goal is to try and catch or receive the ball as best as possible. There are a few ways to do this, but for these shots, the easiest way is to try and position your car almost sideways to the ball. This provides the widest, flattest surface on your car for the ball to collide with. As you can see, as I get up to the ball, I'm trying to do two things at once. Position my car so that the ball would be hitting my car and the ground at roughly the same time, as well as applying some brake and turning my car away from the ball, ever so slightly. Just like using the egg drill when playing catch, I want my car almost moving away and with the momentum of the ball in order to provide the softest touch possible to either deaden or reduce the speed of the ball as much as I can. From here, if the ball is still up in the air, you can either shoot it or slide underneath it to set up another dribble. As your mechanics improve, coming back to the first few shots in this pack makes for a great ground to air dribble training, but we can get to that in a bit. As we move on to the next few shots, these are meant to focus on receiving balls that are now coming towards us in the air. Again, the goal here is to receive the ball, which is best achieved by tilting your car's roof away from the ball with the goal being to hit or catch the ball with the meat of the car's front wheels. Another tip for this is to try and tilt the nose of your car away from the ball on impact, again going with the momentum of the ball for the softest touch possible. The only difference between these shots are the speed at which the ball is moving, so take your time before moving up to the faster ones. For more advanced training when you become more comfortable, you can quickly transition these into full court wall to air dribbles, clears, or passes to your teammates. These next few shots are similar to the goal line catches except now we are simulating a cross court pass downfield. Just like the last two, the difference between these shots is the pace of the ball so that you can have experience with these at different speeds and impacts. Some cool things you can do with these passes are to catch and set up either a power shot, potentially a pass to another teammate, or a redirect. Because most defenders will see this as a shot threat, simply playing the ball like you're going to shoot but instead catching the ball with the front wheels makes for an incredibly effective fake. This one is a little more tricky for sure and could take a lot of practice to get down, but it is certainly worth knowing how to handle it. Just because we are up on the wall, all the same principles of making a catch still apply here. As a matter of fact, I found that an even more exaggerated breaking and receiving works well here. Being underneath the ball just as it makes contact onto the wall is going to yield your best results. Because the hitbox of most vehicles has a slight slope towards the nose, hitting the ball with either the top or the side of your car can send the ball off and in the other direction and doink it back towards your net. 
The timing of your jump is important on this one since you're going to be killing the momentum of the ball so much that getting underneath it for an air dribble has a very short window of opportunity. In most cases though, you should be able to jump off the wall after the ball and either air dribble it or flip into it towards your desired direction. If this particular shot gives you trouble, don't be afraid to skip it and come back. This is one of the hardest catches to make and can easily pinch the ball off the wall more often than not. Alright, now it's time to get up in the air and start making some contact. This one might seem a bit silly, but since we worked on aerial car control, it's time to put that mechanic to use for this one. We purposefully have the ball lined up opposite of the goal from us so that we are forced to fly around in an arc in order to make contact that would result in a goal. No surprise that this is just good overall training for making an aerial shot that requires a large in-air adjustment. I encourage taking this slow at first and after time building up your speed as you get more comfortable with steering in the air. These next two shots are virtually the same, the difference being that the first shot places the ball in the air for you and the second familiarizes you with actually hitting the ball and popping it up yourself. It's on a much smaller scale of course, but this is where the culmination of all this training is leading. There are a lot of moving parts to go over here, so let's tackle them one at a time. First up is going to be boosting up to the ball. Obviously this isn't super advanced by any means, but if you're approaching these mechanics for the first time, then I would encourage doing each of these steps as their own separate drill as it were. Simply jump or double jump and boost up towards the ball without using any air roll. This setup should have you pulling back, boosting up to the ball, and slightly adjusting a little to the left or right depending on whether or not your setup is on the left or right side of the pitch. These next two points are easily the most important part of a successful air dribble. First, as you can see, just boosting up to the ball will send it flying away from the car. Since this is the complete opposite of what we want, we have to make a catch in the air. The simplest way, and the one we'll be using for the beginner part of this drill, is to boost up to the ball and just before we're about to make contact, stop boosting and allow the nose of your car to hit the ball here. The second piece of the puzzle is hitting the ball in a spot that continues the upward trajectory whilst moving it towards our desired location. Now it's good to note that again, because of Rocket League's physics engine, unless you are hitting the ball with the nose of your car perfectly square, the car is going to recoil because of its impact with the ball. This is easily fixed by using air roll, but we'll get there shortly. To finish up this portion, after you've let go of boost and made your first contact with the ball, quickly tap on your boost again to catch back up with it. The timing windows between boosting to the ball, letting go, making contact, and boosting again will become shorter and shorter the more you and the ball are traveling at the same speed, much like how we practiced while dribbling on the ground. Now then, how do we combat the contact recoil our car gets from the ball? This is where air roll comes into play and there are a couple of really cool ways we can go about this. First being that we do everything exactly the same as before. Jump, boost, let go of boost and make our first contact, but just as we're about to hit the ball, hold down your directional air roll button. For the record, standard air roll works here too, but for the purposes of this exercise, I'll be using and encouraging either air roll left or right. The reason for this introduction of air roll is that the recoil almost completely goes away once our car makes contact while being in a previously established directional motion. The biggest factor to success here is being on purpose about which part of your car makes contact with the ball as you're spinning. It isn't too much of an issue if you wait till the moment of contact to start using air roll, but for those looking to start air rolling off the jump, this is something you'll want to keep in mind as you do so. The next and least talk about way to combat recoil is also a trick we'll be implementing in some of our other drills to make our catches in the air. That is to boost up to the ball, start a tornado spin by holding your stick opposite of your air roll direction. Stick either to the right for air roll left and left for air roll right. Once the car is facing away from you, tilt your stick upward and apply a little bit of boost. This is going to push your car away from the ball slightly and create a touch that receives the ball in the air in a way that allows you to follow it up for an air dribble. This technique is at its best if you can manage to get a little more underneath the ball than you have been previously. From here, you can either continue the air roll and dribble the ball into the goal or balance back out to a more comfortable position and follow it from here. Regardless of how you choose to approach it, the timing between boosting and touching the ball are your biggest goals for learning air dribbles. Admittedly, this is a bit of a cheeky one, but I wanted to include it for a couple of reasons. One is that it's great practice to familiarize yourself with needing to get up quickly and accurately to a ball that's hit directly above you. It could be the difference between scoring or getting scored on, so it's worth spending some time on this one. For the purposes of training air dribbles, this shot will carry over a lot of the same principles as the previous shots. Boosting up to the ball, letting go of boost before contact, and then immediately following up with more boosts and touches. For practice, it's fun to see how long you can keep the ball in the air just by dribbling it with the continued contact from underneath the ball. The bottom really falls out of this one quickly, so having your timing down between boosts and touches will really begin to test you here. Shot 16 is a larger and more exaggerated version of shots 13 and 14. 
The biggest thing to note here is that because you're going to be using more boost to get up to the ball, timing when the ball reaches the apex of its arc with the momentum of your car will be the most difficult part. Once you have your timings down, however, you can begin applying the same techniques from those shots to this one in order to make a successful catch in the air and convert it into an air dribble. Shot 17, on the other hand, has you catching the ball while it's in an upward trajectory. This might come a little easier since you're not having to fight gravity in order to make the soft touch you want. For these situations, I find it best to be more underneath the ball. Since my goal is to keep it up, I can use its momentum to help me here. All of the previous techniques still apply here and should be able to help you complete this shot. Now the next grouping of shots focuses on air dribbling from the wall. Each of these situations are similar but unique in their own way and we're going to break down the techniques needed to be successful in each one. First up, 18 is designed to simulate what an ideal first touch off the wall might look like had you been dribbling it up the wall yourself. The only goal here is to get used to driving up the wall, using air roll to properly orient your car, and boost to the ball in order to make contact. Regardless of your input choice to get your car in the correct position, we just want to make contact with the ball. This drill is specifically designed to help you practice your timing in terms of when to jump off the wall versus where the ball is in its flight path. Ideally, we want to be jumping just as the ball is nearing the top or apex of its arc. It's important that we orient our car in line with the flight path of the ball as much as possible before we begin boosting forward. If you've struggled in the past with trying to air roll left or right immediately off the wall to boost towards the ball but can't make contact or initiate a good air dribble, a good tip for this is to wait to initiate your air roll until you've properly lined up with your target. Like we discussed in the directional air roll video, if your car's momentum has you traveling in an established direction, holding your stick in whichever one direction you choose will continue the flight path regardless of what direction you choose to push your stick in. Once we are lined up, however, we can then initiate the mid-air catch and begin our air dribble. A quick aside, the reason you see so many high-level players using air roll to control the ball before an air dribble is twofold. The first and most obvious reason is that directional air roll allows the player to make fluid and precise adjustments in the air to keep control of the ball. The other, and less mentioned, is again related back to the physics of Rocket League. Because of the car's mostly rectangular shaped hitbox, spinning around the underneath side of the ball acts like a sort of cyclone or funnel effect if you will that applies contact and momentum in a virtually 360 degree direction, cradling the ball in a way that can be used to hold and control the ball as it's being pushed by the car's momentum. Shot 19 is going to be the same idea, only this time, you're going to be hitting the ball off the wall yourself. Now, I purposefully set it up this way to help you learn a couple of things regarding air dribbles off the wall. First is going to be where you make contact with the ball. Virtually anywhere the ball hits on your car is going to pop the ball off the wall and into the air, but for the purposes of setting up an air dribble, we are going to want to focus on hitting the ball with the nose of our car. The more square you can get when you make contact, the more control we're going to have. If you're struggling to get the first touch and find yourself hitting it off the near fender, then a good tip I found is to try and hit it with the far fender by turning into the ball just before contact. Since we typically approach these kinds of shots at an angle of some kind, this touch will help you lift the ball into the air and provide you with a good line to get your follow-up touches. The right speed here is important. Too little will hardly get the ball up and off the wall, and too much will send the ball flying into the ceiling. Both can be beneficial for different kinds of plays, but in this regard, we want a nice, happy medium. Ideally, for a perfect air dribble, we want to match the speed of the ball to an extent. How we do this is to match the speed of the ball as it's traveling towards the wall. This is a great gauge of an ideal speed you'll want to have when the ball begins to lose upwards momentum and we make contact with it. The moment after you hit the ball, you'll want to jump and quickly rotate your car into position. If you've done this at the correct speed, you'll come off the wall and float up to the ball already matching its speed. This isn't to say this is the only way to do this, but it certainly is the easiest. Otherwise, you'll need to jump off the wall and boost to catch up to the ball. What makes this particular part more difficult isn't just the timing necessary to get the touch, the jump, and the rotation just right, but is also what happens to the ball once we touch it. If you've ever watched players at higher levels perform an air dribble, it looks as though the ball is sort of glued to the front of their car. That's due to the fact that they've reached the point where they're no longer making touches on the ball, but are instead pushing it with their car. The more time you put into this, the more you'll begin to grasp the timing necessary to pull this off. Because this particular situation can be difficult to execute perfectly every time, you'll want to spend some time hitting the ball at various speeds. You'll want to work on catching up to the ball and making your first touches like this because some in-game situations might provide either more or less time to pull this off. Simply choosing when and how much to boost into the setup is a great way to practice this. 
After you've made contact and popped the ball out, you do have other options at your disposal. You can either immediately jump after the ball, or you can wait a moment to line yourself up before you approach. Neither is wrong to do, and the more you practice this touch, the more you'll find what works best for you in each given situation. For me, I like to try to jump as soon as I can, but I also try to challenge myself to see what else I can pull off by waiting a little bit longer on the wall. From here, how you choose to execute is entirely up to you. You can simply jump to the ball, timing your boosts and touches like before, and dribble it into the goal. Nothing flashy is needed to pull this off. However, there are some things that you need to keep in mind when you do this. Let me show you what I mean. When making your first initial touch, having your car lined up and square is crucial. Like we looked at before with shots 13 and 14, anytime you make contact with the ball, there's going to be some amount of recoil applied to your car from the ball. What exacerbates this issue in this situation is that unlike before, when we were hitting the ball with more upward momentum, we are hitting this ball with more horizontal momentum due to coming off the wall. That means if the ball happens to hit more off the top of your car rather than the nose, it's going to push your car down towards the ground and away from the ball simultaneously, counteracting the entire goal of having a successful air dribble. Now, if you're wanting to incorporate air roll into your dribbles, then I found it best to get myself lined up with the ball before I start using any left stick adjustment. This assures that I'm in line towards my target and can control the air dribble much more effectively. This is where that directional air roll training really comes into play. I'll have a few other little tips on this towards the end, so stick around for that, but the last thing I want to emphasize here before we move on is that when you're making your approach to the ball, speed is obviously an important factor, but not nearly as much as where we hit the ball. Ideally, you want to be making contact on the lower third while it's in an upward trajectory. This makes catching and cradling the air dribble exponentially easier to do. Shot 20 employs all of the exact same techniques from Shot 19, only this time we're going to be using some of the earlier techniques regarding catches on the ground. I like this shot because I feel it more accurately represents an in-game scenario in which you'll have an opportunity to take control of the ball and set yourself up for an air dribble off the wall. A good tip if you're looking to try and do this setup quickly, since most in-game situations require a fair amount of speed, is to catch the ball in a sort of pinch towards the wall. The timing here can be tricky, so don't get discouraged if it takes a bit of practice to get it down. Since our goal is to catch the ball and send it to the wall, instead of catching it with the side of our car like before, we're going to be using the ball's momentum and simply redirect it while simultaneously putting it on the ground. This is done by timing your contact with the ball just before it touches the ground. It will feel almost like the ball rolls off the tip of your hood, and you can even give a slight tap of the boost in order to give the ball a little more speed if you'd like. Shots 21 through 23 are more defensive than offensive, but should absolutely be tools in your air dribble arsenal. The first is going to be a ball that's rolled into your corner, allowing you to grab the big boost pad as you make your approach. As you get better, you'll be able to dribble this across the length of the field, but as you work towards that, I suggest just trying to see how far you can take it, as it might make for a great mechanic to work on in regards to defensive clears. Next is a static ball that you can use to approach hitting it in several different ways. The simplest being a jump off the wall, air roll into position, and either flip or make contact with the ball. A fun tip here is that if you choose to flip into the ball, you can convert these into air dribbles but only if you're aware of a couple of things. First being that basic front flips are going to be a lot less powerful than diagonal flips, so following them up can be much easier to do. Second being that just like our first touches before, not boosting when you flip into the ball will create a much softer touch than with boost. Since you're lined up with this already, you have a lot of creative options on how to approach this one. As for the second shot, it's the same as the first one in terms of the overall situation, only this time you'll be practicing making the first touch yourself, just like shots 17 and 18. This is a setup I believe doesn't get as much practice as air dribbles from midfield, but it can be a huge game changer the further you get into your aerial car control journey. The last shot in this pack is going to be very similar to shot 18, with the biggest difference being that you're not just trying to hit the ball towards the goal, but catch it as you're traveling with more horizontal momentum versus vertical. The key here is to try to time your jump off the wall as to both be in line with your target as well as catching the ball as it's still traveling upward. The window of opportunity to do so is very small, but a lot of situations like this tend to come up in games where you need to make a catch on the ball that's just slightly off the wall, so I felt it important to include in this pack. For the final part of this video, I want to cover just a few tips and tricks you can work on in order to gain more control and overall mastery of dribbles, specifically in the air. The first is going to play well off the previous coverage of aerial car control. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself in situations where you're ahead of the ball on an air dribble. This is where employing that air braking technique I highlighted will come in most handy. Doing this requires that you spin your car around while boosting a little to get back behind the ball while still following it. 
I recommend only adjusting your left stick in order to point the nose of your car away from you so as to not send your car so far offline that you won't be able to make a follow-up touch. It can even be helpful to stop boosting after you've adjusted backwards and wait a moment for your car to be back in line with the ball and then boosting the catch back up for the dribble. Now, if you've gotten this far and are still struggling to control the ball in the air or even your car for that matter, then what you'll want to start focusing on is this last tip. Either coming off the wall or jumping into the air, you'll need to take into account your car's momentum as it's flying or floating in the air. This is one of the biggest reasons for learning directional air roll because it allows for a much more fluid and controlled ability to steer left and right versus trying to turn without it while boosting. But if you haven't gotten that part down yet, that's okay. You can still air dribble and steer without it. You just have to be aware of how to do it. The best way to do so is to not overcommit in any one direction for too long. The difference in steering this way versus using air roll is like the difference between turning a school bus versus a Mini Cooper. Not committing too much in any one direction and being very light on your boost can net you the results you're looking for. Of course, this comes down to timing and feel, but keeping this in mind when doing so is going to help you get to where you want to be much quicker. There are a lot of other nuanced touches and mechanics in Rocket League I'm looking forward to covering, but for now, I'm going to wrap up this video. It got a little long, but I hope you got as much value out of it as I did. I hope these videos are helping you connect all the missing pieces regarding mechanics. I enjoy breaking these things down, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Until then, get out there and get to air dribbling.